my first question actually is, so what is the art? How is it officially called, the practice, if you will? Know, the Tibetan... Uh, uh, well, I practice, you know, Tibetan Vajrayana uh, in the Nyingma tradition, and we have a system of Lingesa. Lingesa is kind of like the Tibetan King Arthur. So there's a series of practices that are related to the meditation and intersect with weaponry. They're kind of like yoga-like things. We call it Jongdar. So uh, there's kind of a a system of martial-related movement called Gartak, which means dancing tiger. Having learned those things, it, there's an intersection with horsemanship and stuff. I was in Montana, so I, was, I explored horseback archery and things. So I started, I had many years of Aikido training, which as you know, has its pros and cons. So when I started learning that system, I decided to kind of like try to go more into realistic testing. So my practice has been kind of a hybrid uh, of trying to take psychophysical principles and uh, ethical or kind of a orientation. Uh, there's a concept of protection, which kind of intersects with the Aikido. But I, I really felt that if, uh, if these ideas couldn't be taken onto the mat somewhere, uh, then you know you don't know what they're worth. So I've, I've kind of had a hybrid practice. I got into stick fighting, a little MMA, and I found my home uh, with the jiu-jitsu and grappling especially. So what led you to, uh, and just before I do that, uh, ask the question actually, so can I ask you how long you practiced martial arts before you came into jiu-jitsu? Like was it a, a long time before? I mean, I started Aikido in 91. And I practiced on and off until about 2006. Okay. I had a knee on at that point. Yeah. Uh, and that's about when I started being introduced to the Tibetan stuff. And I kind of, I basically took a five year period because, uh, you know, there's kind of a five element thing. So like each year I started, I, I backed way off. It was almost like really light Tai Chi kind of stuff I was doing uh, when I left Aikido. This, and then each year I kind of started adding more, sort of built up to the, the stick fighting and the MMA. What made you... It was kind of happenstance. Uh, I was training for the stick fighting, which I, I did the Dog Brothers stick fighting with basically no preparation. I just kind of said like, well, this looks like if stuff works, it should work, you know, there. So, so I started practicing a little, but I realized, you know what? Um, I, I watched the videos and I thought, these guys wrestle, like they're gonna take you down to the ground. I better learn something. So I happened to know that there was this straight blast gym in Kalispell, Montana. So I basically went there, they had a wrestling for fighting class. I said, look, well, teach me some anti-takedown stuff. So I went to like two or three classes or something uh, before my first uh, stick fights. And then after that, I was like, well, this is kind of fun. Maybe I should, like, I like this gym. I had a boxing class. I thought, well, I, I, did, I never learned any punching. It's Aikido, right? I know. So, uh, <laughs> so I started taking a boxing class and then I came one day and it was canceled. And they said, like, well, there's a jujitsu class. You can like go home or you can take the class. I said, okay, I'll take the class. And then Travis, who's kind of a troublemaker, says to me, well, you know, there's a tournament like in a month, you should uh, do that. I said, well, I don't know what I'm doing, but you should do it anyway. I said, okay. So I didn't really get a chance to train maybe like once or twice since then. I went down, did a gi, no gi, and there was a judo tournament as well at, at lunch. And I was like, I'll do that. I just did. At that point, I like I just wanted to eat everything up. So I got thrown. I finally said, okay, judo actually works. But the jujitsu kind of works too. Even just a few classes, like I was kind of effective in judo. So I got hooked on the whole thing. Uh, that's how it started. So I'm sure you know my story, at least to some degree. Uh, so I'm curious, you, you probably know that I had the more or less, it wasn't like a huge shock, but there was a little bit of a shock, uh, shocking sense of, okay, my Aikido is not helping me here, or that was my experience. Did you have that, or how was it for you? Did you have that transition of, uh, yeah. this is, there's some dissonance there, like talking to your dissonance kind of moment? Yeah, it was frustrating. Okay. I think, uh, I mean, it's an interesting thing because in Aikido, I was always told, you know, don't wrestle. Okay. So sometimes, yeah, right. sometimes when you get excited and there's, you know, going back and forth and adding the real resistance and it feels honest and then it starts to go somewhere and I was also don't wrestle. Right. right? Uh, but here's why there was always a reason. So I always thought kind of, okay, but if I did wrestle, right. this stuff would work. And uh, when I first started, there were movements that I would try to make. And because the person's not in uke, they're not trained in that mindset, they would react differently. And it, w it was frustrating. I was like, I would think like, okay, here's the point where I should put more power in and then the thing is gonna happen. Instead of the thing happening, I'm just getting tired. And then like suddenly this guy who is not super advanced, you know, like blue belts, who, these kids, you think like, these are like kids who just rolled out of bed and put on a blue belt and they're kind of tuning me up. So right. it, it was humbling, it was frustrating, but it was a challenge too. What stuck with you? Like you, you 
You didn't date a Kodagashi, did you? I mean, was that? That was. And I Nikyo. Uh, that was Nikyo? It's kind of modified. It was one right, hand. Yeah. Okay, yeah, right. There was definitely like another reason. Yeah. So that was Nikyo. Got it. Uh, so, so it was like, that was good, by the way. I was like, oh, I feel that. Uh, but I feel the power behind it. But I'm curious, so what did you, after you went, I mean, you're a black belt already, so, so you're, you're very familiar with both worlds. And, uh, what, what do you feel s s stick with you the most in, in Jiu Jitsu after, from what, what everything else you did before? I would say, I mean, for me, there's been a unifying principle, which would be there's this other thread that you may or may not be aware of, kind of in the modern martial arts universe of kind of like the internal. Uh, I mean, uh, not an expert by any means, but in that, but I'm, I'm somewhat familiar about the idea. So there's some concepts that I think intersect with both Aikido, strongly with the Tibetan stuff I do. Um, and I've kind of tried to make that core the thing that I built. So I like I have a terrible modern sport jujitsu game. Like I can't remember techniques or anything like that. But I try to stay very close to what like in an Aikido world would be, you know, your like unbendable arm, which I hate that that concept. But like there there are principles of how you connect. Um, I I really looked at like. Um, the way that like Chen Taiji does their wrist locks and things like that to, to just find a different perspective on it as well. Um, and so I tried to, I kind of tried to, to keep close to what would be that trapping range game, but turn it into grip fighting. And then I find that like many of the principles or even the techniques, they become completely modified, but they work. I mean, you're going to find your Riminages, you're going to find your Kaitanages. Uh, the stuff is there, and, and the and the um, the actual wrist locks. You'll submit people, or often if they know what they're doing and they're savvy, you won't submit them. But they will be forced to grip fight differently because of the the threat. So, but I mean, the most important thing, really, I I've been. This is something I've been going back to now that I've had my black belt for years. So I'm getting I'm getting old and you know out of shape. Uh, but tr trying to go back to where I started my martial arts journey with Aikido, this idea of like, is it actually possible to have a, a non-aggressive, uh, not that you don't take the initiative, but like, is it possible to use exactly the right amount of force? And actually, like, is, is there a technical skill set where you can subdue someone without necessarily hurting them? And like, obviously, the, the Neiwaza is, is it doesn't look like the Aikido, but I think that like there is there there are ways where the actual the, the psychophysical skill set overlaps. So like part of what just as like a basically like a silly hobby, you know, like brewing beer or something like that. I kind of like trying to brew like something that would be a version of Aikido that would actually work because you allow uh, you allow submission and you allow grappling on the ground. Um, now that you say yeah. that, I'm reflecting back and remembering our role, and honestly, the, there was definitely a very like strong presence of an Aikido type of, no. of kind of flow. <laughs> your approach, I, like when we rolled, I uh, Chris introduced you as the Tibetan martialized person. He, he didn't mention that you were you an Aikido black belt. I mean, you have the Aikido black belt. Uh, but now that I think of it, there was definitely a sense of you were very flowing, and there was a lot of power and flow at the same time. It was really nice. And I know you're. Three years. <laughs> the way you rolled with me so what, was what is there really yeah, was like quite different from tight, most like from what I experienced from most, most other so people, tight. and I could definitely the see that there's a sense of like keto presence to it. So it seems like working. It does. Seems like I can see that you're working on it, and it shows results. Thanks. I I'd say like the now that I think about it, the um the way that the Tibetan stuff works its way in is that we kind of have this approach of uh, five elements, mm -hmm. uh, which more or less boils down to like a series of different uh, modes that you can put, you know, like whether you're flowing or solid, etc. So like, I think that if you take the ideals of Aikido, the technical skill set of jujitsu, and then try to apply whatever you're working on, for me, it's that uh, it kind of creates a nice it, it's half lab, but half kind of performance art. We can see, like, uh, you know, in order to practice Aikido, you need somebody who's going to go along with your thing. So the question is, like, could you practice that without somebody who's going to go along with it? You know, like, in theory, you should be able to make your partner be a good partner for you. And sometimes you, you have to tap, and that's, that's your ukemi. There's a, well, we still have 
so I'm going to want to make sure I ask this question. So, as soon as we met uh, and we spoke a little bit about our YouTube channel, uh, you mentioned there are some things which uh, you're not fond of, and I'm always I'm very fond of feedback. Right? So I'd love to hear if, if you're open to that for that conversation. Like, what 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 bugged you about some of the stuff I did, or or what I like, caught you in a way where you're like, I don't agree with this. What what can could you articulate that? Um, well, I mean, part part of it might just be. Uh, I see my journey reflected in what you're doing, uh, and I didn't do it the way you're doing it, so I'm gonna, ah, uh, you know. Um, so how can I explain that? And again, I have not studied your work. I've just seen a few things, but what I remember is like, I, well, I, I remember years ago seeing your Aikido channels and thinking, man, this guy is like kind of fruity Aikido guy. Fruity? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I remember like, yeah, like like the soft falls and stuff. I like the soft falls, but like uh, I didn't completely agree with things. But I thought, okay, here's an Aikido guy who's doing his thing, and then a little bit, uh, and then and then it seemed like you were starting to question that was good. And then I just watched this whole thing, and I thought, you know, I I had a very similar thing, but I did it behind closed doors more, and I've always tried to um, remain fundamentally respectful to Aikido, despite the, the obvious problems with it from one perspective. And I felt like you were kind of shooting fish in a barrel. It's kind of like... Can you explain what that phrase means? Yeah, shooting fish in a barrel is like, uh, you know, it's very uh, noble and manly to go out and hunt an animal. I'm not saying that it is, but like you go out and you, you go on a boat and you, you fish like a swordfish or something like that, and it's this big fight, and maybe you land it, maybe you don't, but you've, you... I'm kind of uh, making fun of that idea, but certainly if the fish is already caught in a barrel, you just take a shotgun and shoot it. There's no sport in that at all. It's kind of like, it's like of course, anyone can make fun of, so it's like, to me, I mean, of, of course Aikido doesn't work the way, the, when you apply it into a fully resistant sport context, uh, subtract out the Atemi, uh, subtract out context. Now, does it work when you put those things back in for most people? Maybe, maybe not. But again, this is just because I, I tried to resist doing that. I certainly did it uh, in small groups because I wanted to understand it. But, but to me, it's like you don't, you don't have to go out and, and uh, broadcast that because it's more sophisticated. So I guess my basic point was this is, uh, okay, so first of all, we talked about Travis, my first jiu-jitsu coach, and uh, he used to make fun of me all the time. He would be like, he would give me his wrist, he'd like, wrist lock me, wrist lock me, you know, and it kind of made me mad. He was kind of making fun of Aikido, but at the same time, what could I say? He said, you know, I'm a jiu-jitsu black belt, you know, you're never going to wrist lock me. Uh, and I thought, oh, you know, that kind of sucks. And then I talked to Chris and Chris uh, Howder, and he said, you know, I have so much respect for Aikido. It's such a great art, such a great philosophy. He, he said, uh, Aikido is a great art if you have a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Uh -huh. And I remember thinking, you know, like, there's some truth in that. I'm going to test that out. Uh, and, and I actually, in the end, I think he was right. I think it is a great art if you have a black belt in jiu-jitsu. So I think, like, the very, like, short version of my thinking is, this guy is a guy who should go get a black belt in jiu-jitsu and then make videos about it. That's a good point. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I agree in a, in a sense. For me, like, uh, a little bit of a disclaimer is that it's like the channel is about the journey and and sometimes I put out stuff and I realize this is probably moment, momentary. Like I mentioned, like sometimes it's peak of emotions and I'm like, well, it is what it is, and I just might might as well record it. And sometimes I agree with myself, sometimes I don't agree with myself. But but an interesting moment in, in relation to what you said is, a lot of people expect me to already be that guy. They're like, like as you said, like, hey, here's my wrist, or like, hey, is your Aikido coming up? I'm like, like, dude, I'm like still a white belt in jiu-jitsu. Like, like it's gonna take me a long time until I get there. But people expect that, and and I'm like, maybe that's that that is a place where I'm like, I actually came to a moment where I, I started telling people, okay, I'm not doing it anymore. Like, don't expect that out of me. I'm not the right person. You know, I'm not gonna save Aikido or I'm not gonna suddenly become magical and apply it in jiu-jitsu. It's like, it's not about that. But for a while, I like, tried to do that, and maybe that's, maybe that wasn't the right approach. So, anyway, it's, yeah. You know, I think, here's what I think. Um, first of all, I think I said this before, like, the journey itself, I respect, you know, utterly. I think it's great, and I think putting yourself out there is good. I think that maybe, um, 
because I'm trying to think about it now. I certainly didn't expect to see you here today, uh, and I didn't expect to be on video either, but I did want to talk to you about it. So um, I think it's this, is that having, the thing is, um, I don't know about everybody, but a lot of people, myself, um, put a lot of their life into Aikido because it promised a certain thing. And at a certain point, it wasn't clear whether that was delivered or not, but I think that actually moving over and gaining another skill set uh, as an expansion uh, is a really positive thing. And one thing I've thought about a lot over the last 10 or so years uh, is like how how can that be an available transition for people? You know, and there's a number, I mean, Bruce Bookman is somebody who's doing a lot of work in that area. Uh, there are other uh, Aikido black belts I know who are kind of making that transition. And in my opinion, uh, we should be supporting that and trying to help people understand what is the intersection, where, is the, where are they complementary, where does one uh, exceed the other? Uh, and I think that like, if, if we present the transition the wrong way, it's going to stop people from exploring. Um, if, if you present it the wrong way, it could stop people from exploring. Say, you know, this is not interesting to me. This, this is like the wrong, uh, this is the wrong path. You know, I'm not saying that you're on the wrong path. I, I like what you're doing. But, you know, I mean, I've, I've seen some of your videos and like they are kind of like um, at the expense of Aikido. And, I, and I, as I said, like it's, Yes, it's deserved uh, in certain ways, but again, it's like, it, it's kind of like early UFC. It's like, yeah, like grapplers destroyed everyone because nobody knew about it. Uh, it's like, but now, uh, you know, MMA has moved on from that. Uh, it's a different game. And I think like we should move into the, the next level, different game of looking at the relationship between an art like Aikido and the grappling arts, uh, because that, that would be more sophisticated when we get there. Yeah, it's an interesting thing for me to reflect yeah. while talking like to you that uh, when I started really yeah. diving into this the whole questioning Aikido direction so like Mateo, do you two go years ago, uh, back then the only Aikido black belt that was kind of out there officially was Wardeen. Hmm. So, and everyone's like, oh, there's Wardeen, check Wardeen. It's like Aikido black belt, Jiu Jitsu black belt. I was like, oh, there's one person in the world, you know, who's like black belt in Aikido and in Jiu Jitsu. And it's like, okay, that's cool. And then some, some months later, I met a person from Ireland who was a fourth degree Aikido black belt, first degree Jiu Jitsu black belt. I was like, oh, there's two people. And then I met another one. And then I met another one. And I meet you here. It's like, I learned, I realized. So There's like a lot of there? a lot of these guys, like a lot of people who actually are are familiar or mastered uh, to some degree both worlds. It's just it wasn't just public uh, for some reason. I guess that a lot of people went through this journey on their own and they kept it on their own. And, and a lot of people feel like whoever they whoever is going through the same journey, they feel like they're the only ones. And I think it's a nice transition on a global scale that we're starting to realize it's kind of a normal thing. It's not like you're not, there's nothing broken or wrong about that transition or that exploration. That it's, it's a universal kind of path that some people take. So, so it's just not to make like a specific point, but just that it's, it's nice for you to realize that uh, we're not, we're, a lot of us are together in this. It's not. Yeah, it's not some outcast thing where yeah, yeah. there is one we're, person who yeah, did Aikido and he became like a Jiu-Jitsu black belt, but, but it's right. a path that, yeah. and that a lot of people that. explored. And, and uh, I think the more, I mean, what I'm inspired about, the more we talk about it, the more people pop up who already, like I mentioned to you, like I feel like I'm not the right person. In a way, I'm not the right person to do this. I'm still so green and fresh in Jiu-Jitsu, but there are people like yourself and you know Nathaniel Chalky, have you seen a video with him? He's like in Santa Barbara. He's like, he's a purple belt in Jiu-Jitsu, he's not a black belt yet, but he's like also a keto black belt and he explores like how Aikido works and, uh, and then we made some videos together and it's just I think it's nice to keep raising that global consciousness and as you said kind of create more sophisticated ways of exploring this subject. Yeah you know uh, way before I started Jiu Jitsu back when I was in Aikido I totally forgot about this but I had a, a friend I knew from high school who had started Jiu Jitsu, Judo and uh, he was making fun of me, uh, and and he started showing me some stuff. And again, uh, this kind of like I I just sort of forgot about it. But 
you know, he was dominating me a little bit, but he also said, you should, I, I think you should, you should, you should take this up, you know, jujitsu or wrestling or something because it's a universal language. Uh, you know, I'm in other countries and I had, you know, I met this guy and he was a wrestler and we don't have the same rule set, but it's close enough that you can have a friendly exchange and learn something and test yourself a little bit. And I think that like, there's actually, if you think about how Aikido or other cooperative arts move toward testing and checking things out. Like if I say like, oh, you can't move me, or you can't bend my arm, or you can't throw me, or you can't prevent me from throwing you, but we're gonna add a little more and more. There's actually no reason why whatever you think the, the good way to engage the, the mutually um, beneficial testing, there's no reason why that can't increase and in the, the, the shape of it extend out and be jujitsu. It's gonna be different than the way you train if you're training for an MMA fight. Uh, and that's like, if, if people understood that bridge, then, then you, see the, you can see the way that they're actually contiguous. They're different parts of the same map. And I think that's uh, valuable. Cool. Yeah, oh, like towards 200. the end of the recording conversation. Yeah, no, so is there anything you are inspired to still no, no, address? No. And, and, and like, two hundred people what's, are there. What's the most prevalent you know, on your mind? Camp. Speaking about teachers, all of this, like, what would, I let's say, what would, be, what would be your summary have, like, about Aikido and Jiu Jitsu? And then uh, my summary would be that uh, I think whatever you do, you need a lab. Uh, and in order to have a lab, you're, you're not out on the street. You have some kind of constraints. And like, um, for me, the reason that I like what we call jujitsu uh, is that it's a way of removing as many constraints as possible while still making it something that can be done safely and in like a positive spirit, but that gets as close to reality as possible. I think you can tune that rule set, uh, but like, I think, if that doesn't sound good, you should ask yourself why that doesn't sound good because it, I believe it should sound good. Uh, it's not the only kind of training you need, but like if you don't have something that fills that uh, role, then there's there's something you can't do, and and why not do that thing? Cool. Well, great. Well, uh, I, normally I don't do. I mean, I, I don't come up in the center either, but, but I feel just inspired to also. For all kinds of different reflection on what said it. So like what I think I really phase, liked about what you said the nothing, the, really, the yeah, phrase it's, of it has, it's, it's, yeah, making yeah, the conversation more sophisticated. So and maybe I'm rephrasing thinking, what you said. Like I'm just trying to think of a way. Have, making my interpretation, but I was definitely inspired by what you said. So yeah, and making just uh, elevating you know, the conversation, the making it more sophisticated, that like conversation of what's the next step for Aikido or how yeah. how does it, it's even hard to define that, like how does it really <laughs> work, or what's, what's the more true form for Aikido, it's, there's yeah. so many questions that could be asked here, but I, I agree that, uh, where I feel like, yeah. And I, I, I always feel like mistakes are they're not a bad thing. Like and my mistakes are part of the process. So, so that's why I record myself even when I'm like, I'm not sure if I should record this. Like, okay, whatever. It's like, you know, I need to show it to people what I'm going through. Uh, but then sometimes yeah, so I... The moments where I'm like we'll not, the moments I'm not fond of was, was yeah, like when I was most bitter, and then I was the most and most and kind of antagonistic like about it. I was like, okay, this this sucks and dark. Gonna, you know, there's not like, you know, well, you know, let's look at this side and there's this side and there's this element. And for a moment, I was very bitter, and for a number of reasons. And then, yeah, the conversation wasn't very sophisticated. It's, it's, as you said, it's just shooting the fish in a barrel. And so, and there's not much to get out of that. And I feel a lot of people fall into that. Hopefully less and less as the, the conversation evolves. But I do notice it's a lot about, it's like, Aikido you know, is the best or Aikido you know, sucks. Yeah. You know, it's like, or, or I'll show it to you how it works and you guys are wrong. It's like, very dualistic. I, I think that like, a lot of people, or at least myself, had a very pure idea of what Aikido was promising. Uh, and I think the idea that Aikido uniquely provides that uh, is out there. And the problem with that is that then it means you can't look at anything else. And it also means that if you're not actually a accomplishing that or discovering that through Aikido, then like you're failing. You know? And I think that creates this very high pressure situation. 
describe that a little bit more? Well, I mean, if you invest 10, 15, or with some people it becomes 20, 25 years, you get very, very good at this limited thing. It gets very hard to say like, but have I actually accomplished the thing that drew me to this in the first place? And I feel like if, you, if we remove like some of its politics, some of its just human nature, some of its culture, but if you were just to like remove that, suddenly like, I forget what is it that I do, and just, but like, I, my body knows certain things, and um, I remember this idea of what I was trying to accomplish in the first place, um, and explore on that front, and, and not make it about this one versus that one. Like, like people, if you're gonna invest like hours and hours every week for like the entire rest of your life, um, you should be able to do it for yourself. And like, if, if you're not sure about this thing, you should be able to like ask those questions and get those answers somehow, whatever you're wearing. Yeah, that's a good thing.